Hi, this is Pam, Pamela Gropey Art, and I am going to show you how to paint a sunflower on a pair of jeans. Now with darker fabrics, I like to undercoat with white. That way you get um, the vibrancy of the color because the jean material really soaks up the paint. Now this is um, folk art multi-surface paint. They also make a fabric paint, but I haven't tried that yet. So one of these days I will, and I will share how I like it. Others um, in the painting community uh, use the fabric paint. They say it's softer once it's dried rather than the multi-service. Now, this is my scruffy brush, which comes in my uh, package of Donna Dewberry One Stroke Brushes. This is the three quarter inch scruffy. And I'm just going to tap or pounce in the center of my um, sunflower with the white. I don't have to get it perfectly opaque. I do just want to make sure that I have um, a good coverage there. I'm kind of guesstimating how big I want the center because the leaves, not leaves, but petals are going to come out here to the side. So I don't want an overly huge center. Now, some flowers come in all different sizes. Some have really large centers and others have um, smaller centers. I'm rinsing out my brush in my brush basin at this moment, which uh, is in my, or on my blog under my basic painting supplies. I really like the brush basin because it, um, or some of them call them brush tubs, the ribs in the bottom really help you to get the brush clean. Now, when using a scruffy, you really want this to be as dry as possible because it um, just has a better way of putting down paint when it is. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of dry and I'm gonna kind of outline with a paintbrush the where I want my petals. Uh, this is gonna be covered with um, paint. I need a little more white on my palette. I have, I'm using my gray um, palette paper. This is also listed on my blog. Let me scan up here a little bit for you. See, this is my, oh, wow, that doesn't want to lift. Okay, never mind, I'll show you. This is my palette paper. This is a piece I just cut off of it. It comes in a large tablet. Uh, I also have used the styrofoam plates, or you can use glass plate or picture frames. I've used them all. Um, they work. I'm really liking this paper because it's easy cleanup. Okay, I'm going to refocus for you, get a little closer. I'm also going to kind of go in where my petals are at, or will be. Now this brush is smaller. This is a number 10. This brush is smaller than the brush I will put the yellow on with, or the petals because it's easier for me to cover over the white um, if I use a smaller brush to begin with. And I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate where I'm gonna have the petals. I'm gonna have back petals and then front petals. Now on a different surface, I wouldn't do this first. Now this needs to be secured better so it's not floppy or have space. And, um, as I said, I wouldn't do this if I was painting on wood or, or on a canvas because um, I wouldn't be worrying about covering the dark. If it, this was a white background or a white fabric, I wouldn't be doing this step. And I may end up not liking where these are at and going over it completely later on again. Now that's going to give me an idea of where my petals will be. And like I said, when I do the final color, I will come back with a larger brush. Now these are going to be the back petals, meaning later I'm going to have petals coming up over lapping them. So that's why there's a space between the petals as well as when I press down with my larger brush, it will spread farther so there won't really be that space. Now, on fabric, like I said, I do things a little bit differently than I would 
on a wood sign or a canvas painting or on um, more solid surfaces. All right, now I'm also gonna kind of guesstimate where I want a leaf because I want my leaves to sit underneath. Let's see. So I kind of draw what would be like an arrow. You don't really need to see where the end is, but maybe I'll just push it up there for you anyways. And I would go, I'm would. i going to come in and do some scallopy strokes. Now I'm not getting total full coverage here and it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go over this with the green. I'm just laying down a layer of white so that the colors will be more vibrant over this dark fabric. And I'm just getting a background in there. I don't even have to do the wiggle. I'm just kind of mimicking what I would do. If I wanted to, I could also come in and just paint a leaf shape like that and fill it in. So it's not imperative that you do the scallop. I was just trying to get a leaf shape in the way I know how to do it. Now also I may do some side leaves but it's harder to, to go over a, a thin line like that with the uh, top color. So normally I would just do those and not worry about them being very vibrant. I would just do them with the regular color. But here I'm just going to put in some side leaves. You can do it up here too. And that's just basically giving me placement. And I have a little piece of grub in there. Okay, now I'm going to see, I could do like a half another leaf up here, or I could just do some more um, of these leaves, just to kind of balance out. And maybe I'd want a large leaf coming this way too. Most of the time I usually lay out a pattern before I, I commence to the fabric, but I didn't do that this time, I just started painting. Alrighty, we got the white. I am going to pause here and I will take my blow dryer to it and dry it and then we can go over it with the with the dark colors. Now I'm going to do the leaves first because I want them to set underneath the petals of the sunflower. So I'm taking my two greens. This is the number 12 flat now. Remember with the white I used the number 10. I'm double loading and I'm getting the graduated color so that you have the shadows and the highlights. If you wanted to brighten the citrus a little on some strokes, you could add some bright yellow. I don't have any on my palette right now, but doesn't mean I won't add it. I'd let you know if I did. Okay, now hopefully these are dry enough. I think they are. And it may drag a little bit, so I'm gonna just I'm going to make sure I cover that white and because this really soaks it up I'm pushing fairly firmly and it looks like I did I got good coverage on that you can see a little bit of the white but that really isn't a big deal now we'll go along I'm going to decide if I want the dark in the center as well or if I just want to do it on the outside Let's see, I think I'll go ahead and do it on the outside. Make sure I have plenty of paint on the brush. This really soaks it up. And I'm just pressing firmly, even more firmly than I did on the other one, trying to get that paint to lay down. It's starting to drag, so I'm going to reload. Reload and start getting that and come to the point. You can still see some of the white through there. If you don't like that, you can go back over it. I'm going to drag the stem in. Kind of disguises some of that white showing through. But you get a much vi more vibrant green with the white underneath. And if you want to just cover up like that, you can. Just the corner of your brush, go over it. Or if you want to just go over the whole thing again, you can. 
And I'm going to do this leaf over here. I'm going to pull it, make sure it's pulled taut, as taut as I can get it. And this time I'm going to go with the lighter green on the outside. It's, whoops, I just got dropped it in paint. Let me wipe that off. Okay, let me get some more light green on my brush. Thick, thick paint on the brush. You wouldn't have it this thick for just a regular painting. And it drug on the edge, so I can, I'm just dipping in the light green, coming back over. And just dipping in the light green wasn't a good idea there. It made it too one color. Okay. So we got that one side done. And now I think I'm going to go, I'm going to switch sides, meaning this time I have the dark on the outside, this one I had the light. I, I mix up my leaves sometimes. You don't always have to have it just one way. And I was running out of paint, so I need to reload. Just, you, the fabric painting is pretty forgiving. So you can kind of fix your mistakes easily, at least I find it easy. Now this one I want it to be a little wider at the base, so I'm going over it again. And then come to a narrow. And then I'll drag in my stem. And there you have that. The tip's kind of wonky, but this is going to be going towards the inside of my leg, so it's not really going to show that much. And also you can um, add a little medium. I have some textile medium that would help to um, thin out the paint a little bit if I needed to for some reason. If you're in a hot area, sometimes your paints can thicken on your palette rather quickly and the medium just helps to thin it down a little bit without compromising the paint. Um, you could mix it with water, but I'm not sure how well if that if that would compromise the integrity. I know it does on glass of the paint, so it's better to use like a fabric medium if you have it. Uh, let's, see, let's see, I'm going to do the side leaves here. Let me pull this down a little bit so it's in. And this is just the one stroke slide leaf. Keep plenty of paint on your brush. Every time I go away from the camera, I am reloading. And reloading quite a bit. Because as I said, this really sucks up the paint. Now, I mentioned before when I put the white on there that I don't usually do the stems with the white because it's it is harder to get it covered without creating these big thick stems, but I was showing you placement with that. So I keep reloading, dragging the stem. If your brush starts to get gloppy and won't hold a chisel edge, rinse it out and reload because that's just paint that's drying in your brush and preventing it from keeping a chisel. So I'm going to go down, show you this one. There's the stem. And these leaves should be fairly easy to cover because they had a little more of the white. And I'm going to reload. There. Now you can drag a stem in. I need to see if my brush has enough of a chisel edge. Sometimes you don't even need to drag in a stem. It does. It's not noticeable. All right. Now we're going to go to our center. Well, not our center. I'm going to do these. A lot of times on other surfaces, you will pounce in your center first with your scruffy and then do the petals because you're you, some want to drag the color of the center into the petals but we're not going to do that this time around now i want the back petals to be a darker yellow than the front petals 
I have yellow ochre. It's a pretty browny yellow on my palette. Let me show you here. Probably not in focus, but you get the, here's the o yellow ochre, and this one is moon yellow. They're pretty darker yellows. Um, also, I use school bus yellow for this, but I don't have one on my palette right now, and the moon yellow is close enough. Now I'm going to just load with my yellow ochre and see how I like it. I may add the, yellow, the moon yellow to it if it seems like it's not um, a color I'm liking. And so you see, I, I put the brush on the edge of what would be the center, and I'm wiggling side to side as I pull it out, and I turn and come to a point. This is similar to the slider leaf, but I'm not starting at an angle, I'm starting flat. You can start at an angle if you want to start your petals that way. This has a little glop on it there. You can just touch it up if you want. Now remember, these petals are going to sit behind the front petals that are going to come between. Again, I'm just setting the brush down, pressing, wiggling to spread that paint and dragging to a point. If your point is kind of bare and you want to fill it in, go ahead. Don't worry if it just fades off into the jeans. That's okay too. Now I checked my brush. Make sure I didn't pick up any of that green, but it looks like the material really is sucking it up. So I didn't have to worry about it being on my brush. So same here, center, pull, press, press, pull, lift. And sometimes you can just turn over the brush and re-go over it because there's paint on the other side that's not laying down. So here, another petal. And let's try this petal without reloading. Whoops, see I got some of that green in there. But that's fine. I go with it. I consider it interest. If you wanted to wait for it to dry and go over it again with the yellow ochre, you can. And that may well be covered by the overlapping petal, which will be a lighter yellow. And also, if you wanted to make these petals have a little bit of interest, I dip a corner into the moon yellow and add that to this petal. And you'll see what that looks like here. You see it has a little bit of highlighting along that edge. It's not a lot, but it's enough that it adds a little bit of interest. It could get covered by the next layer. So you never know what's going to happen. And playing around with it sometimes is half the fun. Seeing what effect you get. Okay, one more petal. I'm trying not to get in the camera, but I am. Now you can let these dry if you want. You can go over some of them that are partially dry already. Clean up the tips. I'm rinsing my brush because it got pretty gloppy and I want to make sure I don't get any up in the ferrule because if it dries up there, you've totally made a mess of your brush. So there is the in outer petals. Now I, I wanted the top petals to be pretty bright, so I'm going to add daffodil yellow to my palette next to my moon yellow. And we'll see if I like that as a highlight for the moon yellow. So I'm double loading like I did the greens and going over my... Now I could go over with white so that it's really bright here and I may wish I had. So if you want to go ahead and go over those areas with white and um, it'll make for a much brighter petal for the most part. So let me see, these two seem to be kind of dry. If you want, you could wait for this all to dry before going on to this step, but I'm just gonna see what kind of interesting petal marks I get. So there. Is a petal going off. of those two. And we'll do this again. Now I don't know if you can see it, but I can. You can really see the blue coming through that yellow. I will 
go ahead and I will rinse out this brush and I'm going to go ahead and do the white over top so that we get that brightness I want on those upper petals. So I'm going to get me some more white on my palette and we're going to do just like we did the background petals. We're going to put the white down and I'm going to go back for my number 10 flat. I have soap in it so I'm going to rinse that out very well. This is my brush cleaner that is on my uh, page of um, my most used supplies that I use. This, it's a really great brush cleaner and when I end up cleaning my brushes um, I leave some in it and then let it dry. It, it helps reform them. So here is where I'm starting for that petal and I'm going to create a petal shape. This is the number 10 flat. Remember it's smaller than the 12 so that um, when I go to go over it it doesn't take a whole lot of work to cover it. And I'm trying not to get too gloppy along the edges which is from the heavily loading my brush. And I guess I could add some medium if I stop long enough to find some. One moment, I will. All right, you can see it here, right here in my on my palette. It's uh, milky, very milky, so you don't need a lot, but it will help for it to, to um, make your strokes without getting your edges real gloppy. And it's kind of warm in my studio today, and that's why it, my paint is really trying to dry on the palette quickly. So that makes it flow a little bit easier. I'd open my doors and windows, but there's a lot of noise going on outside, so I would. I didn't want to pick up all the outside noise. Hopefully I had forgot to put my microphone on. You heard what I was saying, but here on my palette is the textile medium. Can you see where I'm pointing with my brush up here? And I'm just putting a dabbing a little bit as I reload my brush with my white. And I will drag if, if the yellow ochre is still wet, some of it in, but that's fine. I, what I want is a background so that my yellow will show up very bright. And it doesn't matter if the yellow ochre shows through. There, I got a little green in that one, but that's okay. So, there we did the background. Let me rinse out my brush and re-soap it. This is what my brush cleaner looks like. And I just rub my rinsed out brush in it in case there's any paint that I didn't get out. And then I just form it to a chisel edge and then I let it set. And I, then I rinse it before I put it in paint again. And anyways, that's how I keep my brushes lasting for years. Okay, now we're back to my number 12 flat. And I'm going to get a little fabric medium in my brush. And I'm double loading my two yellows. It's drying on my palette because it's so warm in here. And let's see if we can go over that white. Now the white might not be dry enough. Let me test and see. It may pick it up. It did pretty good, but I don't know if you can tell how much brighter that is compared to that. It just makes a big difference having that background of white. I'm going to go ahead and pause here and I'm going to dry all of this with a blow dryer so that I'm not fighting with that wet white underneath. I think I have it mostly dry. And I'm going back to my two colors of yellow, double loading on my palette. And I will just go over this one. Now I'm trying to keep, see I have the lighter yellow and the little bit darker yellow. And I try to always keep the lighter yellow to the one side. Um, that's not absolutely necessary, but it just sometimes makes it look like this is the shadow side, that's the highlight side. 
and therefore it makes sense. But, you know, painting and art is a completely um, personal thing. If you like it all different ways, then go for it. There's no right or wrong in art. It's a personal expression. So let me get more paint on my brush. Well, hopefully my hand's not getting in your way with this stroke. Push, drag, and twist to lift to a point. On this side, it really doesn't care, matter about the highlight because you're, the, the sun or your light is coming from that direction, supposedly. So you can do whichever you want. Or you can even um, put a little bit of light yellow on both sides of the darker color. And then you'll get where the center's lighter and the two edges are darker. But that's all just a matter of loading your brush. Or you can come back over these and um, do a second coat and try to mix up what you're doing. My paint's getting a little gloppy in my brush. I probably should clean it out, but I'm almost done. So I'm gonna go back over these yellow ones just because they weren't opaque enough for my taste. And there you have your petals. Some of your tips won't be perfect, but that's okay. Some flowers aren't perfect in nature. And if it bothers you, go back over it, create a new tip. And there you have your sunflower petals. I'm rinsing my brush well because I don't want it to dry in it. And let me put this in my little brush holder. Now we're going to do the center. We're going to go back to the scruffy brush. It's pretty much dry now. Whoops, got a little white in there. Should have got that off. But I am going to use, I, I think I'm going to go with the greens to make the center. A lot of times you'll use like a burnt umber or sienna and maybe some black to make the center. But a lot of um, sunflowers have the green and yellow. Oh, green and yellow. Okay, let's go with the green and yellow centers. So it doesn't have to be a dark green. You know, I have the light green in it, and I'm just going to dip into that lighter yellow and go with it. So I might have wished I had yellow ochre on there. Let's just go with it and see. I might hate it. So just imagine this is brown and um, oh, kind of liking that. I don't have it loaded well enough. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I like that green and yellow. So I just have to make sure my brush is well loaded. So how you do that, let me show you without squishing my paints, is, ooh, I don't know, let me move this. I got some of that medium in there, but I, I smoosh the brush down until it shows it going all the way across. Before I didn't do that and test it, and that is why it wasn't fully loaded. So now I am making sure it's fully loaded with the two colors. And I'm gonna go back over this, and make sure that's getting that. And then I'm gonna come down, just coming straight down. And then I'm gonna go like here. Now I ran out of the darker green, but you see it's making kind of a donut shape. There. And you're coming back up to meet that one. Now if I don't have enough around here, I just tilt my brush back that has that darker color and I put it on there. I overlapped the, the petals. Oh dear, I hope that hasn't been completely out of there. But I overlapped the petals and there you have the center of your um, sunflower. Now you don't have to do it with the scruffy brush. You can paint in a circular center 
and then come back in and do the C shape to make it look like there's a darker center and um, the lighter outer edge, make it in a, the donut shape. Now uh, I can come back in with my liner, this is a liner brush, and you can add some little details if you want, maybe around, you know, little dots around the base. Try not to be as messy as me. You don't have to do this, completely optional. Sometimes I do this on my um, daisies as well. You could do some little dots in the center, give it some more texture. If you wanted more, I mean you could stop right here and be completely fine. If you want some um, maybe more color in your petals, take your liner brush. I have it in the yellow ochre and a little bit. I kind of blend the yellow ochre with the um, moon yellow and I'll just add some little streaks at the base of the petals, the lighter petals. Like I said, that's totally optional. And you can also, if you, if you want to smooth out the edges, you can go into your paint and you can outline wherever you like. You can do it with white. Um, you can inky up the paint by putting a lot into the medium and then into your paint so that it really flows off the brush. I do that um, when I'm doing like lettering and stuff so that it will flow better. And that is how you paint a sunflower on fabric, at least on a dark fabric.